Welcome to the critique of benefit, cost, and economic impact analysis of Atlanta Beltline. The analysis is developed by the engineering and construction firm HDR in 2013. The critique team is Suvranil and Adam. Of the top 50 US cities, Atlanta ranks at the bottom in terms of open recreational space and park available to its general public. Among the available green space and trails, Beltline holds a significant importance. Although we are aware of the importance of Beltline in our life, we are going to critique its impact in monetary terms. The engineering firm HDR did an ex-ante cost-benefit and economic impact assessment study in 2013 associated with Beltline. The study takes into account the costs and benefits associated with the construction of the new Southwest Corridor and the under construction east side corridor along with its southern extension. Bellline received a funding of 18 million from US Department of Transportation under Tiger 5 scheme for the Southwest Corridor Trail project and hence some of the benefits are being computed as per Tiger 5 guidance. The Southwest Corridor project included 2.4 miles of multi-use trails within the Atlanta Beltline Corridor. 14 accessible points of entry, safe routes and connections to four local schools, connections from neighborhoods to four parks, and additional opportunities for physical activity in neighborhoods. On the right side of the screen, we can see the project map of Southwest Trail approved under Tiger V5 scheme. We will now talk about the key stakeholders for the Beltline project. The U.S. Department of Transportation, the Georgia Department of Transportation, City of Atlanta, and Atlanta Regional Commission provided funds for the Beltline development and are keen to ensure that the funds are put to good use. We can tag them as the guardians. Atlanta Beltline is a non-profit organization responsible for construction and maintenance of the Beltline. They receive funds from different public and private entities and put the money to proper use. We can say they play the role of a spender. Then we have the beneficiaries of the Bedline project. Commuters and recreational users are the primary beneficiaries. They use the Bedline for cycling, dog walking, jogging, regular walking and various other activities. We also have some public artists that display their creativity around the Beltline. Due to the increased footfall, the restaurants near Beltline have a steady supply of patrons and are indirect beneficiaries of the Beltline. Additionally, the Beltline generate other economic activities such as more construction jobs and real estate development around it. One of the key components of a cost benefit analysis is the capital cost and the operational and maintenance costs. The total capital cost of the project estimated in 2012 was 63.6 .6 million and is expected to be spent between 2012 to 2016, of which 18 million was received as a grant under the Tiger 5 scheme. However, since the costs range over a 5 year period and the benefits range over a 30 year period, we need to estimate the present value of the cost to account for opportunity costs and inflation. This can be done by using the formula present value is equal to future value divided by 1 plus the discounting rate raised to the power of the number of years we are discounting it for. Based on 7% discount rate, the capital costs come to 59 million and the operational and maintenance costs come to 1.54 million for the full tenure of the project that is 30 years. The analysis has made every effort to exclude costs which would benefit future transit development which is part of the long term Beltline plan. Since the scope of the Tiger 5 application is for funding only for the bicycle and pedestrian pathways, only costs relevant to benefits derived by users of the trails has been included. We believe the CBA has been able to accurately capture the project costs. 
However, we think that it might have missed taking into account the cost of some negative externalities that would be generated during construction, such as noise and dust pollution or loss of use. Although it, would, it is difficult to fully quantify those effects, we think it would still have some effect on the existing users. A project like this has multifold benefits. Some are qualitative while some are quantitative. Since the project received Tiger 5 grant, many of the quantitative benefit categories are outlined by NCHRP guidelines. For some cat benefits, the CBA has used other reputable sources to derive a guidance on the benefits. There are three high-level benefits the CBA has reviewed, that is livability, sustainability, and safety. The categories under livability are health, which captures the savings on future healthcare costs due to accessible recreation activity and is estimated to be $0.4 million. Mobility captures the access to non-vehicle mode of transportation for the purpose of a safe and comfortable commute and is estimated to be $18.1 million. Recreation captures the value derived from recreation by cyclists and pedestrians and is estimated to be $83.2 million. And lastly, reduced auto use, which accounts for the road congestion relief due to lower auto use and is estimated to be $3.8 million. Reduced auto use also falls under sustainability and captures the reduction in pollution and greenhouse gases due to reduced auto use. However, the benefit cannot be separated from what is being captured under livability section. Mobility also falls under safety bucket, capturing the willingness to pay for comfort and safety of off-road facility compared to roads with cars parked on. However, the benefit cannot be estimated separately from what we have under livability. In total, the Beltline project generates $105.4 million in discounted benefits. Let's deep dive into some of the benefits. The mobility benefits are derived from new and existing bicycle commuters as well as new and existing pedestrians taking a walk to Marta. Research shows that bicycle commuters are willing to spend 20.38 minutes extra on average per trip to avoid riding in on streets with parked cars. U.S. Department of Transportation as estimates that the cyclists value their personal travel time to be $13 per hour. A UK study estimates commuting pedestrian benefit per trip assuming a half mile trip walking 3 miles per hour to be 34 cents. Users can also derive savings and health benefits from recreational activity which the NCHRP estimates to be $146 per person annually. NCHRP also estimates the value of recreation at $11 per hour. A uh, UK government study estimated that the recreational benefit of having a cycling track is $4 compared to not having a dedicated cycling track. That's the benefit the cyclists gain out of it. The UK study also estimated the value of recreational walking to be $1 per hour. The reduced auto use from users switching to bicycles instead of automobile can generate congestion and pollution savings of 15 cents per mile as per NCHRP studies. That gives us a general idea of the benefits framework and how each individual benefit tie into the total benefit. So what does the cost and benefits tell us about the viability of the project? Should we carry forward with the project or shouldn't we? The CBA informs us that the Bellline project will generate $46.4 million in societal benefits in excess of costs. The discounted benefits exceed cost 1.8 to 1. That means for every dollar invested in the project, there will be 80 cents returned in monetized benefits. We, we also wanted to take a look at the most recent costs and benefits. The Atlanta Bell Line 2018 report suggests that there was cost overrun which increased the discounted cost to $67.3 million and reduced the benefit to cost ratio to 1.6. Therefore, with certainty we can say that the project passed the CBA test. 
Also, apart from the stated benefits, the project would also have other economic impacts such as boom in business, real estate, and job creation. As discussed earlier, the benefits are generally spread over a long period and we try to estimate the benefits to the best of our ability. However, we aren't always lucky and at times we tend to overestimate the benefits. If we end up underestimating the benefits, we are in a better place. The cost benefit analysis also covered a sensitivity analysis as a part of the analysis, which covers the following assumptions. Discount rate of 3%. An alternative assumption for bicycle trip demand is used, like high and low assumptions of usage. Include the NCHRP new user multiplier for the one mile buffer and exclude pedestrian benefits to strictly follow the NCHRP guidelines. Based on these results, we can see that if the discount rate is reduced to 3%, the net benefits will grow by nearly 171% compared to base estimates. And if Beltline isn't popular among cyclists, then the net benefits can drop by nearly 135%. However, as we all know, the popularity of Beltline has been growing significantly and there is no dearth of cyclists, pedestrians and recreational users. Hence, we can say with certainty that moving forward with the Beltline project was the best decision for Atlanta and the CBA did a good job in evaluating and appraising us with the hidden net benefits.